spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Good day, family and friends. What a wonderful day it is in Christ Jesus. It's good to be at WTJR today ministering the gospel of Christ Jesus. As we come, we just want to allow the Holy Spirit to have His way. Ask that you open your hearts and your minds that we might have the presence of a mighty God and, and His fulfilling capacity. We're going to be ministering today about a new beginning. And that's what we need as we're, we're bringing to the dawn of a new year that we need to bring it on and, and we make promises, we, we make situations. Uh, we say we're going to do one thing or another, but we need to keep our minds and our hearts stayed on Jesus. I am Pastor John Haps from Kilkuk, Iowa. We pastor Family Worship Center. Uh, if you don't have a home church, we would be more than glad to have you. You're welcome. Uh, our services are in the Sunday morning. We start Sunday school at 945. Our morning worship service at 1045. We also have Sunday evening services at 6 o'clock, which I think sometimes now is a rarity, but we do have Sunday evening services, and we have prayer and Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and our youth group also on Sunday night at 7 o'clock. And that's good for the advertisements. Now let's go into the word of the Lord and let him have his way. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you this day, we give you the praise and the glory. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. We thank you, Father, that as we come into this new year, that we come in with a mind set on you, Father, that, that our desires, uh, our hopes uh, are wrapped, uh, that we, we just move, Father, and and speak and are glorified in your holy name. We ask, Father, that you bless. I pray your anointing upon this message. Father, that you move and, and that you speak the words of a living God. And, Father, it moves and transforms lives. That, Father, a desire and a hunger to serve you, to worship you, to know you in a capacity, my God, that only you can do. Thank you for your love and goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Our message today will be found in Colossians chapter 3, starting with verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek these things which are above, where Christ setteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things above of the earth. And so as we, we coming into this new year, we're at the dawning of the first page. We have an opportunity to start this new year off and make it different than any other. A chance that that God gives us. And as I said before, sometimes we have desires, we have anxieties, we have things I'm going to be different. If, if our mind isn't renewed in Christ Jesus, uh, let, let me read this to you in Ephesians 4.23. Be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. A lot of the battles we fight today are, are battles of the mind. And, and it's just about 12 inches from the mind to the spirit, to the soul, to the heart. But our word says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And so we have to get these minds from the carnal state to the spiritual state. And that only can be done by prayer and seeking God, reading His Word, being hungry for His Word. But as we go into the new year, might we go in with, with new anticipation to say, Lord, not, not by my might, not by my power, but by yours, Father. And then as we go into this new year, that our anxieties, that, that we might be at peace. Your word declares that the peace that you give 
this world knows not of. And we're certainly in a world of turmoil, of stress, of anxiety, uh, of things that causes our, our spirit spirit, uh, fear comes upon us. We know these things aren't of you, Lord, but yet they're, they're here because we haven't got our, our minds renewed. We haven't got our spirits renewed. It's not popular in, in this day and age to be a born-again child of God. It seems like everybody's offended by something, and, and, and the Lord says those offenses would come, but what about when we're offended when the rejection of Christ. You know, he says, my spirit will bear witness with yours when, when, when that offense comes and, and when the rejection of the Holy Spirit, there, there's a wound within our spirits. But until, until we get it right in our spirit that we got that confirmation, you know, there's, there's not going to be a new beginning. It'll just be the old things. But as I understand the word of the, of the Lord, when we acknowledge Acknowledge him as our personal Savior. His word says, "Behold." In other words, take notice, take take in consideration. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. As we as we approach the dawning of this new year, Father, and you have given each one of us the authority to choose. We're at the top line of the first page. What are we going to make of the new year? First of all, we have to have the right mind and the right spirit, the right concept. And that can only come from a desire. That can only come from a relationship, Father, that is renewed in you. And that that renewing might come forth, Father, as we pray, as we seek your face, as we have a desire that this world might, might come to the acknowledgement of, of who you are. We, we've got a, a government. We've got states. We've got areas where, where we're making laws that are contrary to yours. And, and as I say that, you know, I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, though, where they had a king, and he built an idol. He built a false god. And, and the threat was that if you don't bow down, when you hear hear the music, when you hear the, the sound of the harp, and, and if you don't bow down, then we'll cast you into a, a, a fiery furnace. But I want you to know that these three boys said, no, we'll not bow down to your God. And they were cast into a fiery furnace. You know, when we stand up for the Lord, there's going to be fiery trials. There's going to be things that happen. But I want you to realize, those of you that, that are aware of this particular scripture of these Jewish boys, when they were cast into that furnace, they kindled it so hot that the, that the people that cast them in, that their lives was deceased because of the heat of the fire. But as the king looked in, he says, didn't we cast three in? But I see four. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Not a hair on their head was singed. There, there was no affliction at all upon them. And they came forth. And they came forth, and the king says, that we'll only serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Church, we need to stand up in these latter days because the Lord will deliver us. He, he will set us in a place of authority. And if we don't bow down, to the things that are going on and we stand up in this new year that is on our horizon and we decide this year I'm going to make a difference. This year I'm going to be different. I'm not going to be part of the crowd. The Lord says that you're in the world but you're not of it. We need to take an authority over our lives and say, I'm not bowing down to the things that are going on. It doesn't make any difference what the government says about, you know, the Lord says, thou shall not kill. Have we come to a place in, in, our, in our lives where we think it's permissible to take a baby's life for, for the pleasure gods, 
for the sexual gods. That's not permissible. Why are we bowing down to the things? It's time, church, to stand up and, and take our country back. It's time to allow the God that we serve to be recognized in this new year. We have before us a new president, and I believe we've got a president that is going to acknowledge Christianity. And I believe our freedom of being able to express ourselves in that capacity. If everybody's offended, you know what? I'd rather be offended for Christ Jesus than to be along with the crowd. Amen. Num numbers is not important in this thing, but it's the important is, what have I done with this man called Jesus? He says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. And we're going to do that one of these days, regardless of, of what we think. You know, I'm, I'm going to read a scripture to you in Romans 12, too. It says, be not conformed to the world. In other words, there's enmity between the world's mentality and the mentality of righteousness and godliness. He says there's enmity between the flesh and the spirit. And so we have to war against those things. And, and it says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's like I said before, a lot of the wars that go on in our life are mental wars. You know, I'm going to take you back to Adam and Eve in the garden. And the Lord gave them a specific. They were in paradise. Everything was perfect. The Lord came down in the cool of the evening and walked and talked and had fellowship with Adam and Eve. But he gave them instructions of these trees don't partake. And then we find out that Eve was around one of these trees and, and, and the serpent beguiled her. In other words, uh, the, the thing was is that God didn't really mean you was going to die if you ate that fruit. But he meant that you would see as he did. You see, and that's not what the Lord said. There was a spiritual death. There was a separation from God because of their disobedience. And today we're doing the same thing that, that corrupted Adam and Eve. We disbelieve the word of God. Why are we where we're at? Because we're disbelieving. God didn't really mean that. You know, when his word says, I change not what he was, when he was represented, when he was the God that created Adam and Eve, he's that same God today. And he's the God of love. And to, to acknowledge and to comprehend and to realize what that love is, we have to have a relationship. And, and I, I think what people don't realize is that sin separates us from the presence of the Lord. But yet today we're still disbelieving Him with everything going on. And as I said that, I think of this. The Lord said it was going to wax worse and worse in the latter days. Church, we can see it. Folks, we can see it. It's waxing worse and worse. I look around at the way the, the world is today. I look away around the way the United States is today. What happened to In God We Trust? What happened to the foundation that our forefathers had? When the Lord said it's going to wax worse, it's, it's here. It's here. It's before us. This ought to be a revelation revealed, and we need to be ready. We need to be ready that if our, our lives would be required of us today, the most important thing is not how much I own, how many cars, how many homes, how much money I've got in the bank, how many friends. But the main question is, especially for this new year and for now, what have I done with this man called Christ? Do I know him as my personal Savior? Do I? Or am I going to hear these words, depart from me? You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. I don't want to hear those words. And my heart's desire is that not a man or woman that have to walk this earth ever have to, but they will because they've made a choice because not only haven't they got that spiritual renewing, this mind hasn't been renewed in Christ Jesus. But the words I want to hear is enter into the joys of the Lord, thou good and faithful servant. There's only one way we can be good and faithful, 
and that's to fall in love with him, to walk in the peace and the love that he has. He said in his word, he says, the peace that I give, this world knows not of. Does that make the Christian exempt from problems and trials and situations a thousand times? No. Because when you ask Jesus to come in your heart, to forgive you of your sins and your trespasses, you know what you just done when you done that? Not only did you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, and you got your name written down in the book of life, and, and you've got a promise of a heaven that Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. What a hope. Well, what an inspiration. But what you've also done is you've declared war on the enemy. You declared war on the enemy. And I was mad at you. He had you. He had you arrested. He had you. We, we, we were subjects into the enemy. But through Christ Jesus, we are now set free. And, and he's mad. Why would the Lord tell the church to put on the armor of God if there wasn't a spiritual warfare? Church, we're at war. And the war, the fighting, will be till you take your last breath or till Jesus comes and ends this thing. And he's going to one day. But until then, you and I need to be prepared. How do we make, make a new beginning? How are we prepared for that? It's just simply as the scripture. If we, if we go just turn over to Ephesians and we go to our Philippians to chapter 4, verse 8. These are some of the things for the renewing of the mind that we might be strong. Because see, sometimes we dwell on the wrong things. The, these minds, boy, I tell you, once you get a picture of something in there, if if you don't rebuke it or take charge over it, if it's not good, it will take authority and you'll dwell on it and you'll dwell on it. And pretty soon it's got a hold of you instead of you having it. But listen to what Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says. It says, finally, brother, I mean, when all else has been done, when you've taken care and when you've tried, but finally, brother, whatsoever things be true, we need truth today. We need to dwell on that truth. We need, to, we need to be proud of the truth. I remember when, when I was growing up, a man's code of ethic and his honor was a handshake. You didn't need a bunch of lawyers. You didn't need that. But it was who you are. It represented truth was your word. And it was an honor and a respect that that handshake was who you was. And we go on to here. And it says, whatsoever things are honest... Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. See, these are the things that give that peace when we're dwelling. This will make a new beginning. This will give us hope and joy and, and things that we can only dream about. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report. We need to hear a good report. You listen to the news today. You listen to the broad. You listen to negativity, negativity, negativity. What about the good thing, the things we need to report? About the joy of the Lord, the hope, amen, and the healing, and all that the Lord does. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because these, those things that aren't what portray this are negative. They're dark. Why, why is it that we're living in a world, we're living in an atmosphere that we seem to think that we've got to turn out the lights to see how dark it is? It's like walking by a place and it's got a sign out there, wet paint. Why do we have to touch it? Why do we have to touch it? You know, I, I, when I say that, I think of this word. From Genesis to Revelation, it's true. The Lord says, don't add to it. He says, don't take away from it. And as I say that, I think of, of Thomas. You know, he says, lest I see, lest I see the prince in his hands and, and the spear in his side where it was punctured, I'll not believe. And the report was blessed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You see, our hope for a new beginning, 
for a new, a new relationship, restoration in the home, restoration with the children, restoration. If we don't get back to this word and know that it's life, and without it there is no life, there's just deception upon deception upon deception. Jesus said, that, I come that you might have life. Why did he say that? Because he knew what we were living in. We were living in a sin-sick world that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, went to Calvary's crest. He went there for you and I that we could be set free. You remember the malefactor that was with him on the cross on each side? One railed on him, and then the other one said unto him, Remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he says, today, today. You see, we don't have any promise of tomorrow. Today you'll be with me. No promise. He says, today is the day of salvation. Our salvation is here. He says, life is like a vapor. It's like, a, it's vapor. What's a vapor do? It's here now and it disappears. That's how our life is. It's like a vapor according to the word of the Lord. When that vapor ceases, that we need to know that we're in the right place with the Lord Jesus Christ. You want a new beginning? You want your year to start off right? You want things to be? Well, then we've got to be a people of humility. We've got to humble ourselves again. We've got to seek his face again. We've got to turn from our wicked ways again. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will heal their land. I believe that there's a change in leadership today because God's people sought his face and they prayed and I believe we're in a place of healing. I believe we're in a place that we have an opportunity. Church, I don't know how long it will last. We don't have a promise of tomorrow. But the Lord says, when you see these things come to pass, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. How close is that redemption? He says, as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the latter days. What's going on? What is happening? Why is there so much sin-sick world we're living in? Because he looked down at Noah's generation and he said their thoughts, their thoughts, remember we talked about the renewing of the mind, are evil continuously. They're not godly thoughts. They're not righteous thoughts. There's nothing that, that is good in them. It says there's continually evil. And the world was destroyed by a flood. Thank the Lord that we have a promise that won't happen again. But he says, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the latter days. Where are we at? Where are we standing? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to see what's going on in our generation. It's right before our... He says, when you see these things come to pass, this was said 2,000 years ago. They're here today. It's a revelation. We're seeing the, the, the Bible prophetic prophecies fulfilled in our very eyes. Are we taking notice? Are we aware? Are we concerned? You want a new beginning? You want to start this year off right? Start it off in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Start it off by saying, God, what would you have me to do? And the thing of it is, we, we, we sit around and we wait, well, what, what does he want me to do? What does he want me to do? What he wants you to do is take the first step toward him. You take the first step. You take the initiative, and you'll find a God with open arms. You're going to find a God of love. You're going to find a God that's bigger than all of your problems. You're going to find a God that the Word says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But you see, there's not words can express who he is or what he is. You have to experience it. As, as much as I love him, I, I cannot express to you the joy, the hope, the peace that is there when I said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and trespasses. Forgive me. 
come into my heart. I want to live my life from this day forward to please you, to serve you. The transformation that took place, our vocabulary doesn't have words to express what happened. I can say for me, I can't say, I can say for me, I knew what happened. I just wanted to tell the whole world the burden that had been lifted off of my shoulders, the joy, the peace. It, w it was new. I just wanted to tell everybody. But then I was set back because everybody didn't want to listen. And the same thing is going on today. A lot of people don't want to listen. But remember this. Remember it. The Lord says, no man comes to God lest the Spirit draws. So how do we know? Pray. Seek God's face. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll show you where to go. He'll give you words to say. But the thing of it is, is without Him, there is no beginning. There's just a, a, an ending. The Word of God specifically says, <coughs> excuse me, death and hell will give up the dead in them, and they'll be cast into a lake of fire. I know that's not popular. I know people, oh, there's no, there is. It's the Word of God. God cannot lie. He says they'll be cast into a lake of fire, and they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth forever and ever and ever. But he says, if you love me, serve me. So see, today that decision is yours. You're either going to love him, or you're not going to love him. But I pray if you have any hope of a new beginning for this new year, it has to be the necessity. The hope is all in Christ Jesus. Folks, let us pray for a moment. Let us go to the Lord. Father, as we come to you, and as we, we begin this new year, might we begin it, Father, in the presence of your Holy Spirit. Might we begin it, Father, that we've prepared an altar before you, and our hope is to seek your face, to commune with you, to hear from you, to be a part, my Lord, of that, of that promise that you said that Jesus would give us. We ask, my Lord, that right now your Holy Spirit will move in a great and mighty way and people will make decisions, Father, at this moment that will be theirs from now and all eternity. That the, the, the new beginning, the new year is in Christ Jesus. Have your way, Father. We ask that your will be done. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you for all that you are and all that you hope to be. And Father, I pray that your will be magnified. That it touch the hearts of the hearers today. And we certainly praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And sweet is the way.